we start on the coast, as you might imagine, at the 2K Paris Plage gets the honour of launching the first French stage of the 2014 tour. It's a relatively short day, 163 and a half kilometres, and there's not much on it other than a pair of fourth category climbs. The organisers obviously being mindful not to overload the riders right after the overnight transfer from the UK and immediately before what's going to be a tough day tomorrow on the cobbles of Paris-Roubaix. Once the race is over the summit of Mont Noir, there'll be 46 kilometres for the sprinters' teams to take control, reel in the day's breakaway and set up what we expect to be a bunch sprint in Lille. Mark Renshaw has been one of the best sprinters in the world. Now, as he twitches around here, looking around, still it is a meagre form of Quickstep, a team that has dominated one day racing this year. And coming up now, we've got the Katusha team as well. They've got the fast finisher on that team. But that looks like a team time trial at the moment. One team taking the Tour de France into the last two and a half kilometres. 40 years of age, the man on the front, Alessandro Pataki, over 150 professional victories. Marcel Kittel moving up through the outside. Ale Jet, as we used to call him in years gone by, has now still got the inspiration to ride hard at the front of a line of riders like this to inspire his teammates. He swings off now, his job done for the afternoon, but have they still got the firepower? Well. It's two lineouts now challenging. On the right hand side in the black and white, it's oh, it's a giant shaman. On the left hand side, Omega Farmer Quickstep. You've got to battle for supremacy at this moment. Well, I'll tell you what, he swung up and he looked straight into the eyes of his worst rivals there, Giant Shimano, because the third rider down was Marcel Kittel. And this is the highway I was referring to as they go under two kilometres to go. Tony Martin hits the front, uh, currently the finest time trial rider in the world, as he digs really deep to keep the pressure on. And when he t has a turn of speed, he actually cracks the uh, team here. He is so fast. Peter Sagan is a long way back, but look at him uh, freelancing his way through the middle of that uh, little gaggle of riders towards the front. Tony Martin, you know, it's almost like having a motorbike when he comes to the front, but Giant Shimano said, OK, right, a nice show of force, gentlemen, but we are the team who are going to try and deliver our men, Marcel Kittle, to the front to get himself win number three out of four. Another one of those sweeping bends, but look at the average speed of 58 kilometres an hour. They don't even slow down too much coming around that corner. That's just about 40 miles an hour we're looking at. Everybody's getting very desperate. That's John Deckenkolb who's moving up right now into second position. Deccan Colby, he's the first reserve when it comes to winning sprints. They'll be looking for Marcel Kittel, his teammate, to bring them through. Uh, in the green jersey, we hit one kilometre to go. Sagan is a little bit too far back at the moment. He's going to have to do something special now. He isn't, you know, he's right on the wheel of Marcel Kittel. He says to himself, you know, I can't beat Marcel Kittel in these sprints, so I'm going to use him as the man that I will follow in the sprints. Look at the way he's weaving past he's Andre Greipel there. there. Through the gap, he's locked onto that wheel. Peter Sagan knows which wheel he wants to follow here. He's now up into fifth place. In fourth place, though, it's Marcel Kittel. They're riding up to the line now. They take one look here. It looks as though Kittel is suffering a little bit here. Mark Wrench is the rider in front of him. He's looked who's on his wheel, and the answer is it is, Mar it is Marcel Kittel. The Katusha boys, I think, have left themselves too long to go. Now it's forced here for Mark Renshaw to lead it out as they come up. Renshaw on the right. Here comes the, the man of the moment. Marcel Kittel taking with him Peter Sagan and Brian Cocker and Arno de Moore on the far left. Now they break for the line, and it looks like Marcel Kittel is going to get... Oh, my goodness me. For me, it's Kittel. It'll go to the photo. Well, it did, and it was Kittel by a little less than a wheel from Alexander Christoph, with Arno de Mar coming up on the other side of Kittel for third. Peter Sagan recovered from a spill to take fourth ahead of Brian Cocker. Andre Greipel was never in position to contest the win, but finished ahead of Mark Renshaw and Danny Van Poppel. Behind them, the favourites all finished in the main field on the same time, but while Alberto Contador and Alejandro Valverde were 18th and 20th, Chris Froome and Bauke Molimo were 42nd and 49th, which wouldn't usually matter, but does today, as we'll see when we get to the overall standings. The unanswered question of the day was how serious was Chris Froome's crash? Well, he wasn't staying at the finish, heading straight onto the team bus, leaving his teammates to talk for him. This stays in, in the peloton, and somebody made a mistake, and... Yeah, hang himself on a wheel and put his foot on the ground and yeah, it's just a big wave and actually Froome was like the third rider who got the, the wave and he had no chance. So 
he just went down and actually this wave went through the whole bunch and even when I stopped and waited for Froomey he was back on his bike and you saw the last riders crashing in a, at the end of the peloton so this wave just went literally from position 10 to the last position in the bunch yeah another day down but uh, you know unfort for unfortunately sorry uh, Froomey had that little spell but um, you know he's wearing a really the uh, summer skin suit as well so it rips pretty easily and uh, you know it might look worse than what it is hopefully it does but uh, he seems to be riding okay anyway so um, we'll see once he gets properly assessed Chris alright you know he felt fine in the final felt good physically but um, we're going to send him for a precautionary x-ray just to check his uh, wrist yeah. so uh, he landed obviously on his hand and his wrist so um, we'll update everybody on our website later on as to, uh, to how we get on of course, nobody had the patience to wait for that, so the media camp relocated to the mobile medical unit that attends the finish every day, where Chris Froome headed to get his X-ray done. In the meantime, he dropped two places in the classification to seventh, and Bauke Mollema had dropped three out of the top eight. Alberto Contador and Alejandro Valverde, meanwhile, have both jumped ahead of Froome, courtesy of finishing ahead of him in the bunch, even though there were no time gaps. It's rare to see, because usually there's a prologue time trial to separate riders by tenths or hundredths of a second, but not this year, of course, so simple placings on a stage can shuffle the standings. None of which concerns Vincenzo Nibali. He carries the yellow jersey into tomorrow's cobbled stage and as leader, his car will be first in the convoy if he needs help.